are the five axioms of Euclid. The first one states that things are equal to the same thing are also equal to one another. This sounds like a transitive property. For example, if A is equal to C and C is also equal to B, so as you can see here, A and B are just equal to the same thing. The second axiom states if equals are added to equals, then the whole are equal. This is similar to the addition property of equality. If we already have two equal things and we added the same value to these two equal things, then the result will be equal also. Number three, if equals are subtracted from equals, then the remainders are equal. Number three is comparable also to number two, but this time around, we subtract. Take note that the remainders as used in a sentence um, does not refer to remainder as used in division. Remainders here means difference. Number four, things that coincide with one another are equal to one another. This is comparable also to how we define congruence. Number five, the whole is greater than the part. The fifth axiom is obvious. No wonder it's an axiom. We don't need to prove this one. Euclid has five postulates. The first one is a straight line can be drawn from any point to any point. Number two, a finite straight line can be produced continuously in a straight line. Number three, a circle may be described with any point as center and any distance as radius. The fourth postulate is all right angles are equal to one another. And as we all know, right angles measure exactly 90 degrees. The fifth one is a long statement. It states, if a transversal falls on two lines in such a way that the interior angles on one side of the transversal are less than two right angles, then the lines meet on that side on which the angles are less than two right angles. This one is an interesting postulate. The fifth postulate, as I mentioned a while ago, is a popular one because mathematicians tried to find its denial or negation. And by establishing the independence of this postulate, mathematicians were able to form a new kind of geometry, a non-Euclidean geometry. Now let me just show you an illustration on how this can be explained, on how the fifth postulate can be explained. Um, suppose we have two lines here and we have a transversal. Remember that a transversal is simply a line that intersects two other lines at two different points. So the two lines may not necessarily be parallel. Take note of that. And we have here two angles. When we add the measures of these two angles, the sum must be less than two right angles. It means that the sum must be less than 180 degrees. If this is the case, that the sum is less than 180 degrees, then the two lines may be extended such that they will have to intersect. Well, the postulate is stated in a complicated way. There is a simpler version of this, and we will have to discuss this in the next block. So that's the world of Euclidean geometry as an axiomatic system. Remember that the beauty of the world radiates through mathematics. It is high time for us to open our eyes and see the world through the lens of mathematics. See you in the next video and remember to click like and subscribe. Bye!